Welcome to Scary Time by Indie Drop-In Network. Each week we feature an episode from the best independent creators. Subscribe for great scary content. If you would like to help support indie creators, check out our Patreon at the bottom of the show notes. Today's episode is from Weird Distractions Podcast. Don't forget to check out the show notes for links to subscribe and follow on social media. Enjoy the show. Begin. Weird Distractions Podcast, a podcast where we tell you stories of true crime, conspiracy theories, paranormal stories, and to be honest, just kind of whatever. Whatever we feel is weird. Whatever we want. (laughs) Whatever we want. I'm Alex. I'm Christy. And this week we are back to paranormal to begin a new month of November, which isn't, well, I guess it could be kind of spooky. November can be spooky in its own sense. It's like late spooky. Yeah, it's like, you know what? It's... 3 a.m. after the part Halloween party's done, you're kind of creeped out. You're still kind of going with the flow, seeing what's going on. That's November. That, like, after makeup. Oh, it's, like, off your face at this point. And not only that, but it's Scorpio season. So, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you and your horoscopes. Well, I'm just saying you Scorpios out there are feisty motherfuckers. So, I'm going to just leave it at that. Because if I say anything else, you might stab me. So... <laughs> Anyways, Chrissy, do we have any, I don't think we have any updates or any corrections. I don't think so, not this time. I don't know, I think we're good. I think, you know what, we can put a crown on our heads and say, we did our best. <laughs> we tried. We tried. So what's your need for a distraction this week? My distraction this week is, um, people know love, I'm um, single. And I just want to say that my distraction is I fucking hate getting ghosted. Oh, no. Like, why even bother talking to somebody if you're going to ignore them? It's 2020. Like, we're all going through a shit year. Why be a shitty person? Yeah. And I can take a hint. So, bye. But, like, why? Why? Yeah. Like, I think we're all adults. You should be able to just say, you know what? Maybe I'm not that interested at this point. I'm not feeling it. You know what? You're a great person. Great soul. Just don't think we're compatible. Compatible. That's all you have to say. Yeah. I'm sorry. Lame. That's my distraction. People are shit. How about Um, you? Mine is actually work again. Surprise. Shocker. It's always (laughs) fucking work. It's always work with us. It's always work. I just feel like I have so much on my plate with work and I'm trying to juggle that. I feel bed. like work keeps giving you more and more. And I keep saying you need to ask for a raise. I need to ask for a raise, but I'm on like a salary, so I can't. <laughs> They'll be like, well, we can give it to you now, but it just means later you won't get anything. And I'll be like, uh-huh, yeah, okay. I feel cool. like you do too much for what you get paid. Yes. So I'm trying to distract myself from the fact that I, at a ripe age of 26, am jaded as fuck <laughs> from work. <laughs> Which doesn't feel great, to be honest. But it is what it is. And sometimes you got to work through that shit, right? So... Without further ado, we're going on a trip. Ooh. Yeah. A we're spooky trip. A spooky trip. So pack your bags. We're going to buy some expensive flight tickets because we are going to BC. Mm. And if you're not from Canada, BC is British Columbia. <laughs> Educate Just yourself. Just in case you wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we are specifically hitting up the Fairmount Empress Hotel. Mm. So the hotel, which was simply known as the Empress Hotel is one of the oldest hotels in Victoria, B.C. It's located at 721 Government Street within the downtown core facing the Inner Harbor. The hotel construction began in 1904 and was designed by Francis Rattenbury, a British architect, although most of his career was spent in B.C. Rattenbury also was the architect for the provincial courthouse of B.C. However, it is now the Vancouver Art Gallery. And we'll be chatting about Mr. Rattenbury a little bit later. So hold that tidbit. Hold that tidbit. So the Canadian Pacific Hotels, which is a division of the Canadian Pacific Railway, must have taken pride as they built this hotel, one that would have a history as beautiful, remarkable, and utterly haunted. Dun, 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 dun. The Empress is a chateau-style building boasting 412 rooms, 52 suites, and four restaurants. This hotel is definitely a powerhouse that has stood the test of time. Sounds fancy. Ish, man, sure. Uh, The hotel was apparently created to serve business people and visitors of Victoria at first, but 
the Canadian Pacific Railway would seize their passenger services into the city, meaning the hotel needed to be remarked as a resort. So the hotel opened on January 20th, 1908, so about four years after it was built, Mm -hmm. um, undergoing an expansion from 1910 to 1912, and then again in 1928. It would also go under more restoration between 2015 and 2017, and which has been reported to cost about just, you know, over 60 million. Oh, which is that much? Just, just, just you know, even. jump change, right? <laughs> like, I have that in my back pocket. You know, they rich over there in BC. Exactly. So, this actually wasn't the first pricey restoration, though. Back in 89, a uh, 45 million restoration was done, which has been referred to as the Royal Restoration. On the same place. On the same place. So, 45 million, then another one that was 60 million. Yep. Could be that dated. You know, jump change. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, over the years, many infamous people have attended this hotel, including Edward, Prince of Wales, Shirley Temple, King George VI, and Queen Elizabeth, to name a few. And just kind of a weird sidebar. So I guess Shirley Temple was reported to arrive at the hotel, accompanied by her parents, during the rumors that she had fled California because of kidnapping threats. Weird. That is a weird tidbit. Right? Right. So, without further ado, let's chat some spirits. And I'm not talking just, you know, your alcohol and whatever. I'm talking some ghostly encounters. You're so punny. So punny. So, the first spirit is of an older woman who apparently hangs out near the at the elevator shaft, which is where her room was once located. The room which she would actually pass away in due to natural causes. So, I guess she was living at the hotel way back when... Older woman passed away in the room. The room got renovated to put in an elevator shaft. And now her spirit hangs around there, essentially trying to get back into what I'm assuming her old room. That's why you don't do renovate or restorations when people die there. Exactly. What's the word? Yeah, bring up the spirits. Yeah, bring up the spirits. Uh, Another spirit is of a hanged man who lingers around the guest rooms, hallways, and in rooms like actually in the room so he hangs in the hallways and hangs out in the rooms he's hanging out here there everywhere so we should rent that room yeah or the rooms pretty much okay so one boy claimed that he saw a hangman hanging man one night in the room he was staying in further knowing that this man winked with his yellow eyes at the boy before disappearing this dude hanging in the room he was just hanging in the room hanging by a noose Winked at the boy with his bright ass yellow eyes before. He's in. Yeah. Creepy. Don't like it. Not here for it. Uh, so, the facts around this is that it was documented on the West Coast Living Canada website that apparently around 1959, a construction worker had hung themselves in one of the bedrooms. The next year, so 1960, another construction worker who was working on the West Tower's top floor reportedly saw a shadowy figure swinging from the ceiling. Yeah, so sad, obviously, because he completed suicide, but, like, now he's just stuck there forever. The ghost is chilling on the ceiling. Yeah. So the most infamous spirit is one Mr. Rattenbury himself. And we're taking a deep dive into this one, because this one's really interesting. So the man who built the Empress, uh, Mr. Rattenbury is... Kind of an inter- he was kind of an interesting man. So um, it, it's kind of odd, though, because Rattenbury didn't die in the hotel or even in Canada. So Rattenbury went to England with his new bride slash former mit- mistress, you do you. Uh, her name was Alma. However, didn't have as much popularity in England as he did in Canada. So in Canada, when he built the Empress, he was super popular. He had lots of money. Like, shit, well, he, was, he was doing good for himself. And then things kind of slowed down after the Empress was built. So him and Alma decided, you know what, we need to change the scenery. Let's go back to England. Like, you know, let's, let's take a hop, skip, and a jump and hope for the best, right? So Alma, who was 30 years younger than him uh, by the time they had moved to England, seemed to have made a new friend by the name of George Stoner at some point. So 18-year-old George uh, was a chauffeur and would spend most of his reported free time with Alma. Oh, I see something happening there. It's getting spicy. So this made Rattenbury question whether they were, quote-unquote, 
just friends. I think not. Uh, things between Alma and Rattenbury were getting worse as well, not just because of the rumors, but because Rattenbury wasn't bringing in the dough like he once was. None of that Empress money, you know? Just just wasn't making it. Just wasn't cutting it. So, on the morning of March 23rd, 1935, Rattenbury was found in one, um, one of his rooms near dead with severe head injuries. His head was beaten with a carpenter's mallet, so severely that his false teeth had fallen out. So he got whacked. So they beat him hard. Yeah. It wasn't until four days later that Rattenbury died due to his injuries. Alma confessed to the murder. However, George had admitted to the housekeeper that it was actually his doing, so they both were charged. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. It's like, well, I mean, you're both kind of shit people, so... You want to have a um, like, confess to it, go ahead. Exactly. So Alma would retract her confession after a visit from her eldest son while she was being held in jail, and George was convicted and sentenced to death. However, this was taken off the table as three 300,000 people signed a petition stating that they felt this was too harsh. And this is a direct quote from Wiki. The young man had been manipulated and committing murder by the older woman. Okay, calm down. Yeah, it's like... Uh, manipulated? The, the force that was displayed in his head wounds doesn't say manipulation. Well, and not only that, but I kind of hate that statement in the sense of... But he's responsible for his own actions, his own words. Like, he has his own responsibilities. Yeah. He chose to be the shit out of him exactly okay. exactly uh so george would only se serve seven years out of a life sentence i know what? i know how mucked up is that like just I'm telling you it's a broken system broken system even back in 1935 uh alma on the other hand was acquitted of murder and being an accessory accessory after the fact but completed suicide on june 4th 1935 she had stabbed herself in the chest six times before she threw herself into the river Stour at Christchurch. Jesus. I know. So. How do you stab yourself six times? Like, that's excessive. Mm -hmm. And like, I know, like, when I say, like, when you do it, like, from TV shows, like, it's usually shallow because it hurts, but, like, six, six times? times. That's a lot. So, something that, because Rattenbury was truly happy when he was at the Empress Hotel, which, I mean, like, it was his pride and work. Pride and joy. spirit must be. That now his, he resides back at the hotel. Settings of Rattenbury's apparition have reported that he typically hangs out at the lower lobby staircase. So, unfortunate. I mean, he, he kind of was a dick, but he didn't deserve to die that way. Because he, as, as I kind of mentioned, like, Alma was his mistress. He already had a wife and kids. He kind of left. So where was wife and kids? Like, still in Canada? Yeah. And he left them apart. Yeah. And I think his wife was sick with cancer mm. i know so he kind of was like uh, i mean it's a complex situation i'm not gonna paint it as anything else yeah like he's not dealt with that because he's a shitty person he's just a shitty person but that didn't have to happen you and didn't have didn't. you didn't have to go for that route but you did but you still maybe necessarily didn't deserve to be to, to be whacked so fucking hard that your false teeth pop out like chiclets like jeez you love me some chiclets <laughs> Reminisce and go check. Let's see. I didn't like them that much. No, I felt like they tasted like soap. Mm, no, yeah, it reminds me of Halloween. Just, mm. Ugh, I miss Halloween already. So another reported spirit at the Empress Hotel is of a cleaning lady wearing clothes not from this decade. The cleaning lady, who some believe is named Nula, reportedly died on site. Not really sure how she died or when exactly she died, but it's said that now she is forever seen cleaning the Empress Hotel. To this day. Even as a ghost. Even as a ghost. Which I Is found... she actually clean? Or just looks like she's clean? I mean, I kind of wondered that. Because it's like... We got cool if you had a ghost that clean. I know. Like, I'd be here for it. I'd hire a ghost to clean my house. If you're actually clean? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to if you wanna dust, I'll vacuum. Like, we can we can make this work. We can make a spin chart. <laughs> just like a, like a Wheel of Fortune spin chart. Whatever tour I spin, I get. Whatever tour the ghost spins, they get. I get. Uh, so the next spirit, known as the Lady in Red, which just sounds very like... Lady in the Lake. Okay, well, I was going to say erotic, but yeah, Lady okay. in the Lake. Let's go blind <laughs> manner on this bitch, I guess. 
Um, so the Lady Red seems to potentially be the ghost of Jeannie Pearl Cox, a socialite who attended events in the hotel ballroom in the 1940s before she passed away, unfortunately, in a car crash nearby. Jeannie was reportedly only 25 years old at the time, so she was really young. That's it. I say as being someone who's 26 and feels like they're, you know, 40, 47. The body of an eight year old. Yeah, I, the bo- I, my age, I am 26. My body says I'm 82. So, anyways, uh, a photo by Scott Graham shows a figure in red in one of the 16th floor bedroom windows. He claimed back in 2017 that this was not a Photoshop picture. Uh, the lady in red has reportedly been seen on the 14th floor and on the ground floor lobby. By who? By everybody. Okay. Just everybody. Everyone sees her. Everybody sees her. It's like not even a big deal anymore. Like it's just her, there's just the lady in red. She just hangs out. She asks you, you know, like where's the party, and then you just point to the ballroom and she go and she go. You know, she's on the dance floor. She's. She loves Pitbull, okay? Oh my God, <laughs> okay, we need to reel it back there. So uh, there have been many stories of the lady in red or Jeannie uh, being known to walk through at locked elevator door elevator doors, uh, turning lights on and off and sitting in bedrooms. So can you just imagine? Going up in your room and there's some <laughs> chick in red sitting there and you're like, um, this is a single. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like to share. <laughs> And where's your half of the deposit? Like, in this economy, you want to share a room? I'm sorry. Not. So, not. However, apparently the dress in the photo that Scott Graham had taken has potentially been debunked as a red tarp used during renovations. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate. I love me some spooky shit. But, but like everyone else has seen her. I know, and that's the thing. It's like that might have been debunked, but like if people are seeing this girl who's just looking for the next Pitbull song to be dropped, like you know, why you gotta why you gotta rain on our parade? Bring a girl down. Bring a girl down. So every October, though, one of the hotel's bars called Notch Eight has featured a ghostly cocktail named the Genie Cox Drink. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it entails. I only got the name. Sorry. <laughs> um, so if you want to visit these spirits from Rattenbury to Genie, you can book a stay at the Empress Hotel. One night seems to go for approximately $263 Canadian. So it's a little expensive. It's a little steep. I was expecting a little more, but still a steep. Not bad. I mean, it is what it is. So that is the Empress Hotel in a very short nutshell. Who knows? Maybe your girls might go out there someday and uh, explore for ourselves. Do a little... Ghost hunt, if you will. When we can travel. When we can travel safely. And have money for it. And have more money. Exactly. So my resources are Wikipedia, CTV Vancouver article um, dated May 27, 2013. Uh, Flight Center article by Kara Burn, Bar, Bar, um, <laughs> no, Bernie, Bernie, I think it's Bernie, <laughs> B-Y-R-N-E. Uh, dated October 31st, 2014, uh, Haunted Places podcast hosted by Greg Polson, Fairmont and Press Hotel, West Coast Living Canada website by Patricia Jordan on June 8th, 2013, and finally the Sun Cruise Media website article by Dennis Began on November 11th, 2019. That is the Empress Hotel. Love it. It is gorgeous. If you ever see pictures of it, holy shit, like this, this is a really nice hotel. Empress Hotel? Yeah, the Empress Hotel. It's beautiful. Like, I would love to go. And I would just love to see some of the ghosts there. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I would go with a full heart ready to see a spirit here and there. I'm Googling. You're Googling it? Well, why don't I tell these fine people where they can find us? Is that it? Oh, yeah, that is. Isn't it pretty? It's very, yeah, it's like like old, but Victorian, but updated. It's very nice. Yeah, it's very fancy. No. I will tell them when I'm You in my tell house. them because I'm going to take a drink of my wine. <laughs> well, you tell them. Yes. On our many platforms, you can find us on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Love a review. Love five stars. Anything would be great. Anything at this point would be great. <laughs> Google Podcasts, Breaker, Radio Public, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Good Pods, and Find Me a Coffee. Ooh. You can reach out to us and through email, suggestions, anything really. To Weird Distractions podcast at outlook.com. You can tweet at us on Twitter at Weird Distract on One. 
And you can hit us up on our Insta page at Weird Distractions Pod. And we actually have a listener requested episode coming up. So episode 34, we have a story coming up from Dave in Nebraska. Oh. But Dave, if you're listening, gotta wait to episode 34. I'm sorry, man. We'll just we'll just let you know now. It's on our list. We're we're gonna cover it. I'm excited to to do it, but uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for supporting. We see you. We hear you. And we love you at the end of the day. Always. Always. And need a distraction? We got you. Bye. Bye. Thanks again for listening to Scary Time by Indie Drop-In Network. Check out all of Indie drop In shows at IndieDropIn.com. If you would like your show featured, reach out to us at IndieDropIn on all social media or go to IndieDropIn.com.